well today we continue with our unfinished discussion on quadriphase or quaternary <coughs> phase shift keying modulations modulation and uh, i'm starting with uh, the slide which we have discussed already here we showed that the modulated signal sit as usual can be expressed in the in terms of the basis functions phi 1t and phi 2t the basis functions are respectively root 2 by t cos omega ct and root 2 by t sin omega ct along with the corresponding scalars si1 and si2 the corresponding scalars will have this general form root e cos 2i minus 1 pi by 4 and minus root e sin 2i minus 1 pi by 4 okay and following this approach i can have a general diag uh, dis diagram for the modulation scheme where i can say that the input data sequence which may be a logical one have to be converted somewhere in this block really you give an, an appropriate name to your block so that we get si1 and si2 as scalars which when multiplied with the basis functions phi 1t and phi 2t will result in the two components of the modulated signal and when these two components are added i get the modulated signal so this diagram that way is a general description for a two dimensional modulation scheme where there are two basis functions is that okay so after this we had started uh, uh, discussing about an equivalent form of the modulator which is uh, which may look somewhat different from the grum smith uh, uh, kind of structure but it will be closer it will be easier to understand perhaps and for that what we did is we mapped this logical uh, ones and zeros to plus one and minus one call them as d odd and d even bits okay and the overall data sequence we called somewhere as d of t i'll show you and then we rewrote the expression for the modulated signal in this form in terms of this d odd t and d even t and the expression was root e times d odd t root 2 by t cos omega ct plus root e d even t root 2 by t sin omega ct okay okay so this with some arrangement can be written as root 2e by t d or t cos omega ct root 2e by t d even t sin omega ct okay and i guess we stopped somewhere here and i asked you not to uh, concentrate on these uh, subsequent expressions we'll come back to this after some time really okay now from this expression with some more maneuvering what we can say is that we can decide to multiply the data sequence d or t and d even t which are plus one or minus one by not only cos omega ct but the scaled version of that the scalar here is root 2e by capital t and as if then we'll have to feed to the multipliers a data sequence having values of plus one or minus one okay so this can this gives rise to an equivalent description for the modulator structure okay where we can talk about a bipolar data sequence <coughs> having values nominally of plus one and minus one okay and i guess you can relate it to the practical voltage values of plus v or minus v plus 2.5 or minus 2.5 whatever is it okay and then the data sequence from this data sequence we have to generate d odd and d t d even t which are also of plus one minus one type now it is simple that this data sequence at this point need not be plus one minus one type really in fact you can even consider your very familiar ttl sequence between zero and one okay and can use a ttl device here because the here the basic operation to be done is to get the odd and even sequence if i may say so which are valued of plus minus one only at this point from this ttl input sequence so you can use a ttl compatible dmax chip one to two dmax ic but sir if we are mm. using mm. so that's the output again from the output we'll have to remove the dc isn't it so put a blocking capacitor as simple as that okay but you may like to use any other digital circuitry really okay <laughs> pardon okay I, i'm coming to that wait a minute okay so what i'm trying to say is that we had a previous diagram in defined in terms of si1 si2 phi1 and phi1 t and phi2 t now i am just rearranging the same diagram and saying that ultimately the equivalent job is to have two multipliers okay the one inputs will be the basis functions multiplied with what root over e the basis function was root 2 by t cos omega ct 
Now I have multiplied it with root e and that is what is going to be the, the one input function which is not exactly the basis function but a scaled version of that. Okay. Similarly, for the other input of the second multiplier, it is root 2 e by t sin omega ct. Okay. So that the second inputs for the multipliers will be a data sequence of value plus 1 and minus 1. Okay. Again, it depends on what kind of device you are using really. Okay. So, so that in the actual implementation, it need not always be a plus 1 minus 1 type as well really. Okay. The points to be noted here is that at this point, now if I call this as the even odd sequence or data sequence and I call this stream as the even data stream. and odd data stream it is understandable that from the input data sequence dt the first third and fifth bits they are going through this path and the second fourth sixth bits they are going to this path okay so effectively the duration of one data bit in this odd path is going to be twice as that of the bit duration at the input sequence is it not so I can say the rate of data in this odd path as well as in this even path is half as that of the input bit sequence. This point is very important. This point is very important for the modulator designer because then I can say and I am assuming again that the input sequence is a very random sequence, very long sequence and a very random one and you have already seen the spectrum of such a random sequence. You have learned that is not it in your tutorial class. Okay. So if I now ask you about what, how is going to be the spectrum of this odd sequence, you should be able to tell me. Let me repeat the question. My point is you have already studied the spectrum of a very long, truly random sequence where 1s and zeros are equally probable. Okay, you have studied that. Now use that knowledge and tell me how is going to be the spectrum of this data sequence here. <laughs> Not same, okay, they are similar. <coughs> The similar, okay. The bandwidth, if I consider the first null to null bandwidth, okay, that bandwidth is going to be half of what it was, what is what it is for this input sequence. So, whichever way I define my bandwidth, okay, if I for the time being say that we are considering the main lobe only, you remember the main lobe, okay, the null to null bandwidth, say, then the null to null bandwidth of this sequence or this sequence is going to be half as that of the input sequence and that means a lot. What does it mean? When I multiply it with a cosinusoid carrier, okay, how is going to be the bandwidth of this signal or even ultimately the modulated signal? The bandwidth of this modulated signal is going to be the same as the bandwidth of this signal, null to null bandwidth say, okay, and the difference between this point and this point is that the signal has been translated to a frequency omega c. Now if you, if you imagine momentarily that if I was not using this QPSK modulation scheme but was using the simpler BPSK scheme for this data sequence and then with the same carrier frequency omega c, then if I just imagine that compare the bandwidth of the modulated signal for a BPSK modulated signal and the QPSK modulated signal, I can say that the bandwidth of the QPSK modulated signal is going to be half as that of the BPSK modulated signal. So we directly can reduce the bandwidth to 50 percent of what would be necessary if BPSK modulation was used. That is a great uh, positive feature of QPSK modulation scheme. Okay. In fact, that is that again is the impetus why uh, MRE PSK modulation have even been thought of. The impetus is that if I could consider four signal points instead of two signal points, I could see that I could reduce the bandwidth to half really. So if I can go on increasing the number of signal points, keeping the modulation format as a two dimensional modulation, I should be able to reduce my transmission bandwidth further and further. Okay? So that is one prime reason why MRE modulation schemes, MRE PSK modulation schemes specifically have been uh, designed and they are also used depending on the requirements. However, it has its own problems really. We cannot arbitrarily go on increasing signal points. It has some practical difficulties also. Anyway, so the, this diagram is understood. So I get the same modulated signal as I was getting in the earlier diagram really, but this is somewhat closer okay, towards implementation really and we can even talk about the data sequence, etc. 
now <laughs> sorry <coughs> the reason i am calling this as odd bit is obvious because it's a 1 to 2 demarks basically so the first third fifth bits are going as if in this path and the second fourth are going in this path this in any case can be interchanged it's not there is nothing specific about sending the first third bits only in this path really i could as well send the second fourth bits here in that case i would call this as the even bit strip this as the odd bit strip okay yeah half at the output of this multiplier means here right bandwidth is the half of what i would have got if i would have straight away fed this data sequence dt to this multiplier to generate a bpsk binary phase shift key signal compared to that it is half yes yeah, yeah that's the other question really ah, ah, that is uh, something for you to verify is his question understood his question is see the bandwidth here if i talk about the bandwidth of the signal here compared to an equivalent uh, compared to a bpsk system where as if directly dt has been fed to this multiplier that's what is the bpsk modulator compared to that bandwidth now the bandwidth of the signal here for qpsk1 is going to be half that is understood he also says yes it's clear his point is now the bandwidth of this signal also is half by the same reason when i sum them up is the bandwidth going to be the same or the bandwidth is going to increase it would be same same it will increase a bit a bit he says pardon time duration for this path also is 2 tb yes for the final output in the demodulator see he, here the time duration in fact these combination of this and this they called as symbols no that's a special case both are working see i have a long sequence i am sending the first third fifth bits to this branch and the fourth six uh, eight uh, bits to this i mean second fourth the uh, even number of bits to this branch so there is a continuous a bit stream coming in both these branches. So when the first bit starts from the hot, right. then uh, <coughs> this is already continuing from the uh, So what happens is that the bit duration stretches here. The bit duration stretches in these branches here. Because after the first bit has been taken here, okay, the first bit continues here till the second bit has been taken here, okay, and the third bit arrives for being taken to this branch rail. I have saved one more elementary diagram here, which is available in most of the textbooks. So please see the corresponding diagram, this description that if I, what I would have, I should have done perhaps is that I should have drawn a longer sequence, a random looking sequence and should have put 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, mark them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 and then I would have, I should have drawn another sequence here how this odd bit looks like when broken from this one. I request you to take, do this exercise really, it is a very simple one. What you could see that if the first bit goes here, then the third bit again goes here during this time. So the first bit prolongs in this stretch really. The second bit which is taken in this branch, second bit prolongs from here to till the fourth bit comes really. So the duration of the bit in this branch after they have been demultiplexed effectively increases, it becomes double. So that I say the rate becomes half basically. I was trying to skip that elementary discussion really. So think a little bit. So effectively, the bit rate decreases. The bit rate becomes half at these points really. Now coming back to his question really, the question is not precisely answered. Somebody said the overall bandwidth here will be a bit more than the bandwidth at this point or this point. Somebody said no, it should not be. It should be the same. Same. Yes. Just let me let me know why it should be same. Frequency because the two carrier frequencies are the same, okay, yes. and the data rate, both of which I am considering again as a truly random one, okay, their rate is also identical. If there was a rate, rate mismatch for some reason, then the spectrum would be somewhat different, a bit different, okay. Otherwise, the spectrum would be the same. Then he had a hidden question. I mean, perhaps he didn't ask is that. Then when I sum them up, is it not that these two get mixed up in the process? Which phase? Because these carriers are well chosen as orthogonal ones, okay. Even if I add them together, really, 
I can always separate them out in the demodulator. Okay, so to sum it up, the bandwidth of the signal in this branch, let me call this as I branch or I path. In the I path, in phase path, we say this cosine carrier is sometimes called as the in phase carrier. The sine carrier is called as the quadrature phase carrier. Okay, and if I call this branch as the Q path. The bandwidth of the signal in the I path after multiplication is the same as the bandwidth of the signal in the Q path after multiplication, okay. Because these carriers are precisely in quadrature, even if I add them together, simple summing up really, we can still get them back by appropriately using coherent demodulation that is making use of the same orthogonal carrier structure in the receiver somewhere, okay. So we do not lose anything, yeah, in question. Well, now this path as I said from here to this point sometimes is called as the I path, in phase path. This path from here to this point is also called as the quadrature path, okay, Q phase path. And then this kind of structure where from the data sequence, input data sequence, we design, we derive some kind of in phase data sequence D or T. I will give a general name as the in phase data sequence, okay. D even T in a somewhat general form I may call as the quadrature phase data sequence and when I have got two multipliers with quadrature carriers here, I say this modulator structure can be generalized and in general I can call this as an IQ modulator structure, IQ modulator structure where the input data stream will be appropriately separated to get some in phase data sequence, quadrature phase data sequence and I use two multipliers with in phase carrier and quadrature phase carrier, I sum them up to get the modulated signal. We will see and use of this similar format for another multiplication, uh, another modulation scheme shortly, okay. So this structure can be generalized very easily where this block need not be 1 to 2 demultiplexer, okay. This block may be a bit more complicated where some from a bit sequence I may like to get say 2 bits at a time here, 2 bits at a time here so that we can have 16 possible points, signal points in the constellation diagram and things like that. So with, with those modifications, this structure remains the same and the modulation format is called as IQ modulation structure. Now you will find that there are many ICs already available from various vendors where you can get this in a separate, in a single IC. Okay, with two matched multipliers there, okay, identically, uh, uh, two multipliers with identical features, okay, and the sum are therein. These are very, uh, these are very popular component, they are available from many vendors. And such an IC or such a block can be used for BPSK modulation, you have to tell me how, this IC can be used also for QPSK modulation, okay, within the parameter specifications of course. And this can also be used for some other MRE PSK modulation schemes as well. What you have to do is that you have to design this part so that you design appropriate data, I path and Q path data and feed it to the same structure, okay. So this is available. Some vendors, they even supply, see here for this block, you needed a cos omega city and a sin omega city component carrier. So you would like to use a single VCO, single oscillator somewhere and from that oscillator, if you say that oscillator output is cos omega city, you had to go for some extra circuitry to generate sin omega city, exactly 90 degree phase shifter version of the carrier really, so that those two could be added, used as carrier in this IC, is it not? Have you ever tried generating an exactly 90 degree shifted version of a sinusoid, starting from a sinusoid, is it possible? I think this was also a requirement when you learnt about some SSB modulation, demodulation techniques, if you remember. Huh? Uh, you have not tried in the lab really, can you, pardon, you did it, no, no, okay, okay, I mean conceptually, did you try that, huh? okay, uh, uh, that is an interesting issue really, I mean uh, one way is that by using simple RC circuit, simple RC you cannot get by, you, isn't it, exact 90 degrees out of, yeah, right, right, what, uh, one simple technique may be that you have an oscillator, let, take the oscillator output, lead one, take it to two branches. Okay, lead the phase by 45 degree to one branch by using RC circuitry, lag the other one by 45 degree, so they are now in phase quadrature. 
only those RC components have to be matched, they have to be identical and then you can get a 90 degree, relatively 90 degree phase shifted carrier screen. Something similar to that can be in, in integrated very easily. So this kind of IQ modulators structures are also available where you have an inbuilt phase shifter, pi by 2 phase shifter, which may need only an oscillator input point. So you have in your oscillator, feed it to this structure, it has its internal pi by 2 phase shifter and this multipliers and summer. So but RC is highly sensitive variations in frequency. Uh, this design is the design is made such that over a certain frequency band it will operate really. Many cases it comes with a standard value of say an intermediate frequency of 70 megahertz. That is very readily available really. You ask for an IQ modulator structure with an IF of 70 megahertz. Okay, it's available really. Now if it is instead of 70 megahertz, if it's a bit less really, it hardly matters because in, the, in any design, ultimately you talk about some kind of tolerance. Usually a phase tolerance of 3 degree, up to 3 degree is considered to be good. If the relative phase is say uh, instead of 90 degree, if it is 87 degree also it is acceptable. 88, 89 is better, 90 close to 90 is even better. Okay, so that way it is not so phase sensitive so to say, okay. There are even ICs where I mean uh, they even integrate the oscillator part there partly so that by using a few external components like R and C, you can tune it to the desired value and the whole structure will operate, okay. Anyway, so this structure is a good one, okay, and useful one. So QPS, for QPSK modulation, we can use such a structure basically. So once we generate our IPath data and QPath data, I can feed it to an IQ modulator structure. This we have already discussed, the symbol rate, okay, because I have four signals, so I can I can talk about four symbols. Each symbol consists of two bits, so symbol rate or symbol, du symbol duration is twice that of bit duration, symbol rate is half as that of bit rate. So symbol rate, if I use RS as a notation for symbol rate, it is half of the bit rate, RB, okay. And so we uh, can transmit the signal, same signal, instead of BPSK, if we go for QPSK, we can transmit with a 50% bandwidth as compared to the BPSK. So that's an advantage. Now one more interesting twist to the problem really. See when we, when I said that, okay, split this input data sequence to an IPath data D or T here and a Q path data as D even T, see I did not mix up the two data sequence really, this D or T or the IPath data is independent of the Q path data, do you accept? Because fundamentally here the bits are independent, okay, equally likely, truly random. So the bits here in IPath and the bits here in the Q path, they are also independent, okay. So what I have done effectively, if I now try to take a split view, suppose I consider this branch, could I say that this portion is effectively a BPSK modulator? So the output here, I could say is a BPSK modulated output where the carrier is cos omega ct and the input data stream is d odd t, fine. What about the lower part, if I try to block the other one, this part, another BPSK modulated signal, okay. The difference is this time the carrier is sin omega ct. Okay, and the modulating sequence is D even T. These two sequences are independent, these two carriers are orthogonal to each other. Okay, fine. So, can I say then that a QPSK modulation is somewhat equivalent to as if two BPSK modulators, okay, running in parallel with quadrature phase uh, carriers, okay, but the two data sequences are independent. Okay, fine. So, I can have a view that a QPSK modulator as if is equivalent to two BPSK modulators running in parallel sort of thing, okay. And then the data rate in each of these BPSK modulated signal is half of the input data rate. So the bandwidth of each BPSK modulated signal is half of what it would be if DT itself was taken to one of these modulators really, okay. So this approach also helps sometimes in designing circuit trees, etc. Well, let us go to the demodulator structure. Can you not draw a demodulator structure for yourself for QPSK? Uh, why should it be different from uh, the general structure that we have already studied in the form of correlation receiver? Huh? So uh, name a few blocks of the demodulator before I show you. What are the various uh, processing blocks that should be there in the QPSK demodulator? Multipliers, okay. I am talking about coherent demodulator, yeah. Right. Integrator, okay. Then sample the integrator output at t equal to capital T, which is the symbol duration, yeah. And 
then the decision making part okay good that's it yeah so pardon is this okay बीपीएस के yeah that's the point because all the symbols or the signals have got equal energy that subtraction is redundant so we simplify in hardware structure so it's not necessary okay Now, how is this R one going to be? Yeah. Dumping time T is what? Two TB, right? T is equal to two TB. Yes. Is this question understood? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> his question is this dumping instant. Okay. If I sample this integrator, I path integrator, I can say, I path integrator at t equal to t one. What is the sampling instant for this q path uh, uh, sampler? Let me call it t i. Let me call this as t q q path. I I'll keep on calling this as I path. I path in the demodulator and Q path in the demodulator. Okay. Pardon? Is it going to be T one or something else? It's some instant, an appropriate sampling instant for the I path signal. So uh, it, the question is, at the moment trivial, I'll say. It is a point. I mean, in fact, uh, uh, at the moment trivial because if I have my demux such that I get these two bits and simultaneously I release the symbols from the output of the uh, demux relay, then they have to be sampled at the same instant. That simplifies my sampling clock clock circuit in the receiver in the demodulator. Is it not? Okay, but but. Let me uh, go back to my constellation diagram. That's a point. Let me briefly mention at this point. I should have the well. I don't have the constellation. Yeah, I have the constellation diagram really. See what he says is. Let me consider that in the modulator, in our QPSK modulator, we had dump. We had the multiplexer output had given the two signals simultaneously. So, once the multiplexer output changes, here. both this there is a data transition in both the paths i and q path which implies that in my demodulator the sampling should be done simultaneously that simplifies my clock generation circuit also okay so yes that is fine okay but this also means that at a time both of these can undergo changes so the odd bit may change from what it was in the previous instant and the even bit may also change which means i can have both the bits changed as a transition from one signal point to the other one okay so if i go back to my constellation diagram quickly see if the present symbol which has which is being transmitted is s1 bar say with 10 being the binary representation so one may be the odd bit zero may be the even bit then during the next symbol transition 10 may change to 01 
1 may change to 0, 0 may change to 1, is it not? It may, it could as well change to S4 or S2. If S1 changes to S4 and the next symbol is S4, then we find that the odd bit that has not changed, the even bit has changed, okay. So, in the next transition, one of the two bits has changed, similarly for S2 and S1 from S1 to S2, but when the transition is allowed in both the I path and Q path, then both the bits may change in the symbol and which means the phase change, corresponding change in the carrier may be as large as how much, 180 degree as it happens in BPSK, is not it? Whereas for QPSK, the other allowed phase change was by 90 degree, okay. So when I allow simultaneous phase changes in the I and Q path data, then there is a possibility that some of there will be phase changes by 90 degree plus 90 minus 90 there may be a phase change by 180 degree as well is that okay okay this is not a very major issue apparently but it matters if we just consider a somewhat practical situation where the modulated signal when it is being amplified the amplifier has got some amount of non linearity so here we have a situation in the BPSK, we had a situation of no phase change or phase change by 180 degree. Here in QPSK, we have phase change of no phase change if the next bit, next symbol is also S1 or phase changes by plus 90 degree, minus 90 degree as well as 180 degree, okay. So more number of phase intermediate phases may be changed in the process. Really. Now if the amplifier is a bit non-linear, the power amplifier mostly in the transmission line, in the transmission channel, then this non-linearity, if you now go for some analysis or if you take up some simulation, okay, you will find that a more, more amount of phase change, the phase change in any case should take place over a very short duration, ideally over an infinitely small duration, whenever the symbol changes from one symbol to the other one. So a larger phase change of 180 degree over a very small duration contributes to larger amplitude in the larger uh, portion in the amplitude as well as in the phase spectrum of the modulated signal, if that makes sense. I am going for intuitive discussion to save time really. It is like this, a like little bit of non-linearity in the amplifier, okay, shows up more in the side lobes of the modulated signal spectrum. It shows up a little bit depending on the nature of the non-linearity. In the amplitude spectra, it also shows up in the phase spectra. When you talk about spectra, you should also consider the phase spectrum really. So, a non-linear amplifier has got some problem for this kind of large phase change of 180 degree. So if, if in some application you can envisage that well the amplifier is not going to be truly linear as it happens in a satellite communication system, as it may also happen in other poorly maintained power amplifiers in terrestrial systems as well, you should be a bit cautious and this problem can be avoided, I mean can be reduced to a great extent by introducing what is known as a little bit of offset in the generation of this odd and even data stream. Okay, that's again a very simple trick here. Instead of giving the two bits simultaneously here in the odd and even path or I and Q path, we stagger them so that there is simultaneous change in both the bits is avoided. Is it okay? Pardon? Right. But the problem there is that this problem is not so severe. See, any nonlinearity has its own problem in the amplifier, in the channel, propagation channel or in the radio channel, modulation channel if I may say so. But the problem is not so severe because in BPSK you had only two phases to detect, 0 and 180 and they are widely separated. In QPSK you have got 0, 90, plus 90 and 180 degree. So if you are going for some kind of phase detection mechanism really, then you have got a two more values in between, allowed levels in between. So the problem is relatively severe for QPSK. Is that okay? So what can be done is you introduce as if a delay of TB here of bit duration not symbol duration <coughs> okay and then now in this process simultaneous transition in the I and Q path is avoided okay and there will be transition at one of these two paths at a time really but the number of transition will be more isn't it every TB there may be a transition okay earlier when that transition was allowed simultaneously, there used to be transition in every 2 TB. But now with this delay, okay, there will be transitions, but the transition as if that is more frequent, maybe even every TB or so, 
but the amount of phase change is now reduced to plus minus 90 degree. No, 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 no. See, at the moment, we will be talking about spectrum when assuming a linear uh, modulation channel. We will not address the issue of non-linearity. Okay, that needs um, mathematical uh, uh, derivation, which is beyond the scope of our course, really. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah. There are more, so there are, every TV will have correct output and every alternate TV will have the wrong output. Wrong no. in the sense, there will be two bits grouping. No, what I'm one bit with the, the bit which was previous and the same bit with the bit which came after us. There are two grouping. No, not really. See, what I am suggesting is instead of holding, say, see, when I say that two bits are uh, given out simultaneously, it is obvious as he uh, uh, rightly pointed out that one of the bits is being held here for a duration of TB, is it not? See, suppose, suppose an odd bit has come, you had a, you had a transition at the output and now the odd next bit, next bit to come serially is an odd bit, okay. You are waiting in the demarks to give out, to cause the next transition till the next even bit comes. So the next odd bit is being held for an additional TB duration. Is it not? What I am talking is that and that is how I am ensuring simultaneous transition here. I need not do that really. I need not do that. I just, I will say that it need not be Dmax then, it may be bit splitter. If it is even bit, root it to this path, oh, this path. If it is an odd bit, root it to this path. No delay, do not hold them together. That is what I mean really, okay. So still the path bit sequences are independent, okay. One symbol is independent from the other symbol and like that. Only thing is that if you go, go for timing diagram really, you will find a partial overlap of the bit, of the symbols. That is fine. And that is what means in terms of the constellation diagram that a transition from S1 bar directly to S3 bar over a bit duration of TB is not allowed really. S1 can lead to S3 only a, through a change through S4 or S2 in, the mean, in between over a duration of TB, over a duration of TB. So, a phase change of 180 degree takes place in parts, first a phase change of 90 degree, then another phase change of 90 degree really, okay. The symbol decision is taken as usual, one decision per symbol duration of 2 TB in the demodulator. So, so far as error performance con is concerned, for a linear channel there is no problem, okay. In both the cases, whether you stagger or delay one bit sequence, the performance remains the same really. But when you use this staggered version, this is a more practical version, okay. So this staggered version of QPSK works somewhat better if the channel has got some amount of non-linearity, okay. So in practice, what is used is this staggered version of QPSK, which is also known as offset QPSK, OQPSK or staggered QPSK. Staggered is a delayed one? A delayed one, delayed one. When you are staggering the two uh, bits, uh, uh, D odd bit sequence and D even bit sequence, you are staggering them. You are not making them aligned in every symbol duration. They are staggered in time, yes. Yes. Right. So, no, I'm what I'm now saying is that let if this is your input sequence, if this is the first bit that is rooted to this, whenever it comes, it is rooted to that, whenever this bit is over, it is rooted to that. When the next bit comes, the moment it is over really, it is rooted to this even part, okay. Now the first bit that has been rooted to D odd path, it is held there up to this duration of 2 TB, okay. From this instant of time to this instant of time, when the third bit has come totally. And so the first bit is held from duration after this initial delay, you have to observe the bit in first bit really. So from this duration to this duration, if I say it is 1 TB here, from 1 TB to 3 TB, the first bit is held here in this line. This is changed only at this instant when the third bit has been received completely. So it is from 3 TB to 5 TB, it is a third bit which goes there, okay. What about the second bit? The second bit is given at this instant of 2 TB to this even part. That gets updated at 4 TB. So the even bit stream gets updated at 2 TB, 4 TB, 6 TB like that. The odd bit stream gets updated at uh, TB, 3TB, 5TB like that. So take it that way. That is the staggered 
that is the staggered one that's so what he is asking it's not a large delay it's very conveniently made uh, the same as that of the big delay basically so the simplest thing is that use a flip flop okay and then you can realize it
yes okay okay now yeah it's time it's time i know i'll just take one minute one minute just to leave you with an idea so that i can expect you to draw certain things and save our time next day okay uh, here is an mre psk modulation format m is an integer this is a general form of psk phase shift keying okay where we are talking about creating m number of signal points in the constellation where usually for convenience in design etc we consider m to be 2 to the power k where k is an integer okay that means uh, for example as a specific case if we consider k equal to 3 then m becomes 8 so as if we are talking about a signal constellation where there will be eight different signals okay and these eight different signals will mean or eight different symbols that means from the serial bit stream three bits will be taken considered as a group and a group of three bits will result in eight possibilities so this three group of three bits will be assigned one of these eight signal points that's the basic modulation format okay and this is again a two dimensional modulation scheme in the sense that there are two basis functions phi 1 and phi 2 in fact the basis functions are the same of same nature as that of the qpsk only thing is that this t or symbol duration this time is ktb or three times the tb bit rate okay as a specific case if i consider k equal to 3 okay and uh, this is one form of description of the modulated signal sit the sig signal uh, the time limited uh, signal uh, energy signals sit is will be root 2 e by t cos 2 pi fct plus 2 pi i by m so just note this thing and we'll stop here i'll take up from this point in fact we have to cover that point one portion we have left about the qpsk signal i'll from talk from that and we'll try to see that the general format is something like this in an iq modulated format modulated scheme any question okay if not yeah pardon I that we are getting in the QPSK, the bandwidth of the noise is yes less than the bandwidth in the corresponding BPSK scheme. Yes, but we get noise in the I path, we get noise in the Q path. The noise is not taken away in one side really. Okay, so we have we'll, we'll, the bandwidth of the noise is reduced that way. Okay, we'll talk about this noise effect when we talk, uh, try to find the error performance of the modulation scheme. Thank you.